U.S. Army Specialist Jack Berrios fought for this country in Iraq. Like many veterans, he's dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder. And now he's dealing with a possible loss of his wife. She may be deported. His wife, Frances, was brought here illegally by her mother at the age of six. Now she is a wife and the mother of two. The Barrios live in Van Nuys. Jack says his life will collapse without her. Should military families be treated differently? Shouldn't this country respect the American soldier and the sacrifices they've made, Ron? Well, I think they should. I think we should respect every human being, frankly. Um, we've put, we've created this class of non-persons, which is absolutely 19th century, uh, and, and our own inability, again, to deal with the contradictions, to come up with co coherent policies on immigration, has inflicted millions and millions of people into the Netherlands. Yes, they shouldn't have come into this country illegally. What were they supposed to do? What have we done about it? And here's a guy who fought, served his country honorably. I mean, surely there's a way to waive the 10-year deportation rule, to let her go to Tijuana or fly her to Mexico, or Guatemala City, actually, and, and get a visa and come back without all this angst. And I sort of love it when these issues come up because it puts it in our face that what we're doing makes no sense. It has no humanity. It's not in our interest. Well, you're not suggesting, it's, you're not suggesting illegal immigration. You're not suggesting illegal immigrants who just stay here. Is that what you're suggesting? No, they should be identified. We should decide what the standards are for them beginning a process that leads to getting a green card and moving forward. Right now, we have people, millions of people who have no identity, no sense of, of responsibility. They can't get insurance. They don't. They drive without licenses, registration. God forbid they run you down in a sidewalk or your children. Then you're what are they going to do? Right. Well, yeah, what are you going to do? They're going to flee. Right. They're going to flee. There's no liability. We're hurting ourselves. We have millions of people living under the radar. We don't enforce our wage laws. We, 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 it drains our health, public health care system, our trauma centers. Well, they shouldn't I mean, be here illegally. Well, we're not going to deport 13 million. Let's just face that. It's like drugs and everything else. There's no rationality, no control. And we have to get control. We have to pick and choose like civilized nations do all over this world. We've got to get people in that contribute to our society. By We have to have a process of legal immigration. And we have to pick and choose among... We have to get rid of the criminal element and the people who aren't contributing to our society and, and decide to give a process of integration into our society for those who are here, are obeying all the other laws, are providing for right. their families, are working. I mean, we, we have to become a, a 21st century society. All right, Charlotte, and we've gone way, way over on this topic. You haven't said a word. So I'm going to give you the last word on this, and we're going to move on. Go ahead. What do you think? Well, I mean, I think that she should be deported and be able to apply for a waiver like one can do. And But I think that illegal immigration is a big problem in this country, but specifically in Southern California. Right, it is. And you know, I appreciate the fact that this particular woman did learn English. She has at least gotten a high school degree. And you know, I was watching a special called Latino in America this weekend that CNN is running. And they say that the most important things for success are learning the language and becoming educated. But I just think that you know, there are people waiting in line. We spend three hundred fifty million dollars a year on on health care for illegals. We spend. We have fifty percent of our prisons in LA County are full of illegals. It's killing us. I mean, it's just out of control, and I think that we need to enforce, and I don't think we should be a sanctuary city in Los Angeles. I, don't, I think for, Special Order 40 needs to be overturned. I think it's a real problem. I have sympathy for this family. I understand where they're coming from, and if the legislators want to put something in place that says uh, there's an exemption for someone who goes into the military, serves a certain number of years, gets a college degree, uh, learns English, then I would be okay with doing something like that and fast-tracking those people to becoming legal and to becoming citizens. But currently, we don't have anything like that. And I think that you basically have a slippery slope. If you give exemptions and, and special considerations for this family because they happen to get a story in the L.A. Times, no, then no, everyone no, else no, is no, going to no, come no, in no, over no, the border no, no, and no, say, no. Charlotte, I'm you're that, tough, Charlotte. No, no, Charlotte. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're being I'm awfully tough. On tough. This issue. No, I understand. But here's the thing. <laughs> this man served his country. Now, no, whether he had a story in the L.A. Times is irrelevant. You can't penalize the wife of a man that defended <laughs> your freedom. You can't do that. You can't but, you say know, go back and don't come back. 
I think that anybody could say, oh, well, you should let me stay because my aunt's a nun or my father gave lots of money to charity. I mean, there's lots of there's lots of reasons why people could say I need an exemption. It's not just military. There are a lot of good things that people and their family have done and sacrifices they've made but this man, for but society. Charlie, no, no, I understand what you're saying, <laughs> but this man was away from his family for two years I fighting for the people in this country at the very least. They should look at this case and, and try to come up with an exception because no. what? Because why in the world would anybody fight for our military? Why would you do that? You just wouldn't go. Yeah, because I understand they might be able to get a waiver because many people get waivers and they go through that process. They should go through that process like anyone else, but they, sh they shouldn't be, be able to get special consideration only because they got an article in the LA Times. All right, okay. <laughs> All right, listen, we're, we're so far over, it's not even funny, so we're going to get through these last two topics. Let's go. Roman Polanski is awaiting the possibility of extradition in Switzerland on sex charges that took place here in 1977. What if the victim in that case said, you know what, leave it alone, drop the charges, I'm out? That's what Samantha Geimer is saying. The renewed media attention has caused health-related issues and interfered with her job. She just wants the whole thing to go away. There's the issue of judicial and prosecutorial misconduct, which is being investigated. But the issue here, Charlotte, if the victim says, throw the charges out, make them go away, do you think the authorities should listen? Well, I, I do think there is there should be something called victim's rights, which there is, but usually it's with regards to fry them and give them the, the worst penalty possible. I think that they should listen to her, but the main reason I think they should not go forward with the prosecution is because I think for practical reasons, it's a problem. She doesn't want to testify. It's causing her health-related problems. She could lose her job. She already got a settlement reportedly of $500,000. We have the situation with the taxpayer having to pay for the prosecution, and every single inmate in California costs $49,000 per year. He's not a threat to society. He's 76 years old. He doesn't even live in the United States. So I think, and the prosecutorial misconduct, which you already mentioned, there are a lot of practical reasons not to proceed, in addition to the fact that the victim does not want to testify. And I don't know that they could make her testify. So I don't think they'd have much of a case in the first place. All right, Ron, oh, come on, Charlotte. Give me a break. <laughs> I mean, this guy victimized her once when she was a little girl, barely pubescent. Then he fled the country after pleading guilty and facing sentencing. He's victimizing her again by not having the courage to come forward, stand in front of a judge, let the smartest lawyers in Los Angeles plead his case, make the case that, that there was prosecutorial misconduct. She doesn't have to testify. He's already a convicted person facing sentencing. The only issue is, 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 is his claims that there was misconduct, in which case, if the judge ruled there's a new trial, uh, she'll never testify again, and I, nothing I think will we happen. Should respect, I think we should respect her decision. And also, it could be that this would be a slippery slope to other victims not wanting to come forward because they feel that they're going to be dragged into a case they don't want to get dragged into. You know, the, vic the society's prosecuting a felony crime like this. The victim isn't the prosecutor. In that case, every rich person would pay off every victim and get away with murder and anything else they ever wanted to. Yeah, let me say this. I'm going to take the last word here. Here's why I think this is dangerous, Charlotte. Because in the event they let this happen, that means, as Ron points out, any time there is a victim and they get paid off, they become afraid and they go, you know what, don't prosecute. I I'm sorry, I'm out. I think that sets a very bad precedent, a very dangerous precedent. You could threaten somebody. You could threaten them and say, if you testify, it's going to be bad news. Okay. I'm back, I'm out. Well, then you still have someone who has committed a crime walking around on the streets. That's why I think this is an interesting issue. And Charlotte, I understand your point because many people feel like you do, Ron. On the other hand, many people feel like you do. I just got to tell you, though, I don't think you can let the victims make those choices because if you do, you're opening up a, a, a huge can of worms, at least in my opinion. Okay, that's it. We're out of time. We're out of time. We went so long tonight, we only have three topics. Ron, Charlotte, well done. Thanks very much. If you're so smart, prove it. Contact NBC Filter on Twitter or Facebook or send an email to thefilter at NBCUni.com.